Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So Halloween is here or at least this is Halloween weekend and unfortunately there's not been many a horror movie ready to go for everyone but there was Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's has apparently set a domestic box office record for the live action video game adaptation sort of genre as it were and it's actually looking like it's going to do a pretty decent overall haul uh, at the box office so let's check this out ladies and gents hit subscribe if you're new here uh, and we will take a good look at some of these box office numbers so i'm surprised by this mainly because of peacock universal right they released this day and date day and date on peacock universal have been doing this a lot lately for films that they just don't have any confidence in uh, and I am surprised at that. I bet you Blumhouse especially uh, was very annoyed at this deal. Because releasing it day and date, well, one would think it would run the potential to destroy the, uh, you know, the, the box office take. But yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's uh, has done pretty well at the box office this weekend. So let's move past Sonic the Hedgehog, Uncharted, Pokemon, Detective Pikachu. Now, it is important to note, although it sets a record for live-action video game adaptations, Super Mario Brothers has absolutely destroyed this movie, obviously. But that's an animated video game adaptation. So this is a very specific record. Like they, you know, have a habit of doing lately with these reports. It's always trying to claim something has a record. Um... And this one is live action video game adaptation. So the film has set the box office record for the largest opening day for a live action video game adaptation. It grossed $39.5 million in its first day of release. But that is obviously including $10.3 million from Thursday night previews as well. But it's done pretty well, all things considered. You know, it's not done too bad at all. Uh, and Deadline has a more comprehensive breakdown of this. Um... But you'd think, you'd think Universal would learn from this because it, it looks like they'd be able to earn significantly more, but they've just screwed themselves. So Universal Blumhouse Five Nights at Freddy's is meeting the expectations of the crazy predictions that were out there. They're not crazy predictions. I mean, this is this was one of the biggest. This was a huge game, huge, huge game. Uh, and I'm surprised that they didn't have faith in it. So since yesterday midday. We saw a three day of $68 million, the Emma Tammy directed feature take of the video game, which is also co-written by the game's creator, Scott Cawthon, uh, is looking at a $78 million across the whole weekend. Some have this movie at near Oppenheimer opening of 82.4. We don't know yet. Those numbers will come in later on. Um, but yeah, it's not done too bad. Not done too bad at all. So it's fun to see how Universal is in its marketing. Uh, literally repeating that type of moviegoer turnout again after title. Uh, let's harness the spirit of fans. Another title, sorry. So uh, Friday for Freddy, or, or Five Nights at Freddy, sorry, is 39.4, like I said previously, including 10.3 on Thursday Night Preview. Sources told Deadline it was going to be front-loaded. And the outlook is a 39% drop on Saturday which is close to what Twilight did on its Friday to Saturday. However, Freddy's skews more male, 57% to 43% male. Uh, female, sorry. Uh, it's clear that the under-24 set of 80% doesn't know or doesn't care that this movie is on Peacock to watch at home. And that's the interesting thing. They chucked it on Peacock, but the under-24s, 80% of them didn't want to watch it at home. They want to see this movie together, and interesting to note, Comscore, Screen Engine, Post Track polls, only 23% of the audience are actually Peacock subscribers. Compared to 63% Netflix, 47% Disney+, 44% Hulu, 35% Amazon Prime, 23 Max, uh, 27% Max, 22% Paramount+, 16% Apple TV. I don't think it's that much of a surprise that 23% of the audience are Peacock subscribers. I mean, the thing is... If you've got Peacock, you'd be watching it on Peacock, by and large, wouldn't you? That's the thing. Uh, you'd want to watch it on Peacock if you're getting it for free. Well, paying for it, but obviously getting the movie on there as part of a subscription for free. 
So some estimate that Peacock in its day and date of the movie could have stolen around 10% of Freddy's box office potential and that it might lead to a big drop next weekend. However, Universal even surprised themselves with their expectations here. They always thought it was a niche play. I don't understand that. So stupid. Hence why the pick went on Peacock. Why would you think this was a niche play? It, I mean, the the game itself, it, it's, it's, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Um, it's not a small... Yeah, it's just not small. I mean, you know, I'm looking at it now over on uh, the Android store, Google Play store. I mean, they've got millions of downloads. Every single one, millions of downloads. Why on earth they thought that this was a niche play is beyond me. Uh, it's one of those things that really hit the sort of culture, I guess. And interestingly enough, there was a movie that came out before this that did very, very well, which was a play on Five Nights at Freddy's, and that was Willy's Wonderland with Nicolas Cage. In fact, it's better reviewed, uh, hilariously. Now, they say this, despite any forecasts about next weekend's drop for Freddy's, a massive 42% said they'd like to see the movie again in theatres versus watching it at home. So it has rewatchability factor. But Blumhouse made this pick strictly for the fans, apparently, not older audiences, and that choice is paying off in spades. That's why it's not had such a heavy, high uh, rating. So now with a comm score of A-, minus, how often do you see a horror movie get that type of grade? They're typically Bs and Cs, and Freddy's is in the neighbourhood of Get Out A-. minus. Com score, Screen Engine's post-track improved to 77% and 4 stars. They've done really, really well. Really, really well. Very, very, very well. Apparently, lots of walk-up business, but I think that's the, the season. People are like, yeah, there's nothing really out, so we'll go watch stuff. Um, now, obviously, for all... You know, movie theatres, that's really, really good, to be fair, because loads of people are sick uh, of theatres closing in their neighbourhood and uh, the strikes and things like that. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's not too much else to go on here. I mean, you had uh, South, South Central and West, them pretty well. Uh, IMAX, they've stayed with Killers of the Flower Moon, which makes sense. You wouldn't really want to put Five Nights at Freddy's on IMAX. It's not really an IMAX pick. Um, but yeah, it's done very, very well. Very, very, very well. Uh, and I think it'll probably continue. I mean, next weekend, there's just nothing coming out. I mean, next weekend's, if I remember rightly, I mean, you, you, you're on the lead up to Hunger Games and the Marvels. And I don't think they're going to really take much of the audience from this. So, Five Nights at Freddy's done really well. Maybe I'll go watch it, I guess. It didn't really interest me, to be honest. Uh, for me, I, I enjoyed, uh, you know, w Willy's Wonderland. That was a fantastic movie. Uh, very, very, very funny. But yeah, breaking records for live-action video game adaptation. I wonder what will beat it now. Hot predictions down below. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.